Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Peter Reiling. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to Aspen and to Act Two 2011. You know, a few days ago was the 4th of July. Uh, my wife, Denise, Denise, where are you? There we are. My wife, Denise, and my daughter, Eva, and I drove cross country to get here. We got in on, uh, late on July 2nd. And one of the reasons we wanted to get here among many, because we love coming out to Aspen, was to be here for the 4th of July parade. So we went down to the parade, and we were lucky enough to, uh, downtown to bump into a few of our Aspen New Schools fellows. So we bumped into uh, Sarah, and, Sarah and Tommy Houston. Sarah, where are you? I know you're probably out there getting lunch right now. Sarah and Tommy Houston, we bumped into, there we are, Sarah. We bumped into uh, Kim Smith and her husband, Bill. Kim's right over here. We bumped into Andy Rotherham and his wife, uh, Julie. And we had a great time at the parade with them and their kids. And afterwards, as Sarah and Andy do, whether in New Orleans or in Arlington, Virginia, they said, why don't you come back to our house? Let's have some sandwiches and get some cold drinks. So we said, sure, that'd be fun to do. It was a hot day. We were looking forward to something cold to drink. And a funny thing happened. We were over on the other end of town, on the east end of town. And uh, we had to cross the river uh, to get to the beautiful house that they rented. And we're crossing the river, and we're going over the bridge. And I looked down. And I don't know how many of you had a chance to get out and look at the river, but it's flowing very, very, very high. It's the highest it's been in in decades, I think, out here. It's been a huge uh, winter of snowfall, and so the rivers are running very, very high. And I looked down, and I saw this raging river. And I saw brown water flowing, and I saw the white, cop white caps of the uh, rapids. And I heard Andy turn to Julie and say, hey, look over there. And he points. And while all I could see was the raging rapids, Andy saw this one little calm spot in the river. And Andy's a fisherman. And he said, hey, as soon as we get done with this lunch, I'm going to go down to the river, and I'm going to cast right into that calm spot there, and I'm going to be there for the next few hours pulling out fish. And of course, he knows that he has to release the fish again, although, Andy, I do want to say I noticed that big barbecue in the backyard where you rent it. <laughs> um, but that moment actually had a big impact on me. I was thinking about it this morning when I went out for a walk, because in many ways, it epitomizes what Aspen is all about. First of all, here was I looking out at this river, and all I could see was the raging water and the white caps. Andy looked at it, and he saw something very different. He saw the calm spot. And I thought, this is why I love coming to Aspen. I'm with people who see the world differently than I do. And it's an important thing, I think, for all of us in our fellowships to recognize that one of the best things about it is we're with people who see the world differently. And we never stop learning from them because they do see the world so differently. The other thing that struck me about it was this, the calm spot in the river. To me, Act 2 is a, is a calm spot. Now, you've looked at the schedule, and you probably think it's a raging torrent. Uh, but in fact, our hope is that Act 2 turns out to be what we want any of your visits to Aspen to be, a time for you to pause, become calm, step back, do some thinking, draw inspiration, and harvest great ideas from your fellow fellows, just like Andy is harvesting those fish. Uh, we don't want you to release the ideas the way that Andy is. We want you to hold on to them. But we do hope that Act 2 provides you with that opportunity to have that calm spot in the middle of the raging storm. So welcome. I want to uh, begin with a few thank yous. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you fellows who have traveled so far to be here. It's a tough place to get to. And it, you know, we can't control the weather ever, and it seems that always we have some people who get hung up in Houston or New York or wherever it may be, and I know many of you had to. Poor Mariam always told me that she actually slept in the airport in Denver. Mariam, I'm so sorry. I'm also sorry for spilling my lemonade on you a few minutes ago. <laughs> Uh, but I do feel badly, Miriam, that you had to spend the night in there. And, and I know that we've had fellows come in from Durban. We've had fellows come in from Delhi. We've had fellows come in from Singapore. We have fellows who've come in from Sao Paulo. 
Uh, and of course, we have fellows coming from San Francisco and from Spartanburg. So people are coming in from all over. Thank you very much for making this trip. I also want to take a moment to thank the families that are here with our fellows. Uh, we decided at this act, too, we really wanted to open up more to families, and I'm so glad that so many of you have joined us. It's great to see so many spouses and partners here and, and to see so many kids running around. It's a great thing, and we're delighted. I know that one thing that no fellow has in abundance is time. And I know that when a fellow takes time to become part of the fellowship program, uh, the time often comes away from family. Uh, I can certainly relate to that, and Denise can relate to that. Um, but I want to thank all the families here who have made the space in your lives um, for the fellows in your lives to participate in something that I think is so important for Easter, each of us as individuals, but also so important for the world. So a round of applause for all of our families as well, too. There's another group I feel I, I really want to thank, and that's our moderator core. Uh, we all know that when we get together, the magic comes from having the right people around the table, having the right readings or discussion topics, being in the right location, but nothing happens without the right moderators. And I would like our moderators to please stand and us give them a, a really big round of applause. Thank you so much. Uh, I also want to thank a few of our sponsors. It's a long list, and you'll find that list in your program book if you're so inclined, but I want to uh, mention a few right now. I want to thank uh, uh, many sponsors who helped make, make today possible. I want to thank the Rodell Foundation. I want to thank Sue Murdoch and Dan Lynch, Joan Fabry and Michael Klein. Michael, I saw you around here somewhere. There you are. Uh, I want to thank the McNulty Prize Fund, who's made it possible for so many fellows to be here. Uh, the Ithaca Foundation, David Langstaff, thank you so much. I want to thank Barclays Wealth, Nomura Securities International. I want to thank Gilchrist Berg. I'm not sure if Gilchrist is here or not. Uh, Connie and Jim Calloway have also made it possible for so many fellows to be here. Uh, Hayne Hip for making it possible for our Liberty Fellows to join us. Rachel Kohler and Mark Hoplamazian, uh, Heather and Bo Wrigley. So a great uh, round of applause to everybody, please. Thanks. <laughs> Pauline Brown. Where are you, Pauline? Raise your hand. Pauline. So first of all, we need to thank you for that amazing reception last night at Montclair downtown, which was so much fun. Denise and I were pulling up, and I, we drove by, and I didn't see anyone out front. And I said, my God, Denise, nobody's here. And then we walked in the front door, and it was unbelievable how packed it was in there. What a great crowd, and what a great evening. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Pauline, because if uh, you've registered, you've gotten your Varney sunglasses. And that's thanks to Pauline as well. So a double thanks. I, you can imagine that pulling off an event like this, many of you are involved in these, is not easy. We started the planning about a year ago. Uh, we have a committee of fellows who help us uh, plan what to do, um, but we also have a very core team. You've, you've worked with many of them. I'm not sure you know all of them. And so I'm going to ask Abigail Golden Vasquez. I'm going to ask Tom Loper. I'm going to ask Caitlin Colgrove. I'm going to ask Joanna Herman. And I'm going to ask our, our friend uh, Elise Chen, who's joining us for the summer, to please identify themselves, along with Martha Lang, who is on loan from the Henry Crown Fellowship Program and doing great work helping us to pull this all together. And so where are you all? And I need to thank Deb Murphy. Is Deb in the room? And her entire team here at the Aspen Institute. Too many to name, but just a great team. They've just finished up Ideas Festival, which is a lot, a lot of work with a lot of moving parts. And yet here they are helping us with this. So a round of applause for them as well, please. So let's see who's actually in the room today, just as we've done every time we've gotten together for Act Two. So I'm going to call the name of your program. And if you are a fellow of that program, I'd love to have you stand up. In the beginning, there was the Henry Crown Fellowship Program. May I ask the Henry Crown Fellows in the room to please stand? And then came the Africa Leadership Initiative in its first iteration, Africa Leadership Initiative Ghana. 
Who is here from the Africa Leadership Initiative, Ghana? Patrick Awua. <laughs> and then we decided to launch in East Africa, so may I ask the fellows from the Africa Leadership Initiative, East Africa, to please stand. They're here in numbers. And then we decided to move into Portuguese-speaking territory, and that was the Africa Leadership Initiative Mozambique, and our partner, Romeo Rodriguez, is here. There he is. <laughs> and then, of course, we decided to go south, and we ended up at the, with the Africa Leadership Initiative South Africa. Who do we have? We um, did a bit of a twist. We decided in the Africa Leadership Initiative then to launch in West Africa. And so we have fellows here who are actually either from Ghana or Nigeria and are part of the Africa Leadership Initiative West Africa. Please stand. Of course, it was around this time that the Liberty Fellowship got launched in South Carolina, so all of the Liberty Fellows, and how about Hain and Jenny, why don't you stand as well? That's for the great state of South Carolina. We then launched the uh, Central America Leadership Initiative, even though we lost our mic, but uh, can you hear me okay? We then launched the Central America Leadership Initiative. All right, let's see if we... Kali, so we then launched, we then launched the Central American Initiative. From there, we at the Institute launched the Rodell Fellowships in political leadership. And may I have our Rodell Fellows please stand along with Mickey Edwards. Then we have the Nigeria Leadership Initiative. I think we have a couple representatives here from that program. Is that right? Anyone here from the Nigeria Leadership Initiative? Yes, indeed. <laughs> the very one who had to sleep in the Denver airport. <laughs> then, of course, we decided to move uh, east and we've launched the India Leadership Initiative. Fellows of the India Leadership Initiative? Then, as I mentioned, we have the Aspen New Schools Fellowship for education entrepreneurs, our fishermen and others. <laughs> How about the Caddo Fellowship and environmental leadership? <laughs> and then, of course, our Middle East Leadership Initiative. I know we have several fellows here from that. So in all here at Act Two, uh, we're somewhere around 210 fellows from 27 countries, and so it's just a great gathering. We are representing almost, but not quite, but almost every class that has graduated in the world or started in the world. Believe it or not, we're now 67 classes around the world, so I think a round of applause just for that. How many are here for the first time at Act Two? Could I ask you to stand? Wow. Great. <laughs> Terrific. And then I'd like to ask trustees from the Aspen Institute uh, who may be here with us. Could I ask you to stand, please? <laughs> I see Margot Pritzker back in the back of the room there. Margot, welcome. Good. Well, with that, welcome to everybody. I hope we have a sense of who's in the room here. And of course, you're going to have ample opportunity to meet lots of others. And so with this, I'd like to bring up uh, the president of the Aspen Institute, Walter Isaacson, and ask him to say a few words. Thank you very much, Peter, for this and for all you've done to make the Institute so great. Peter mentioned uh, the great roaring river with that rock of calm. Aspen, the Institute, was started 60 years ago as sort of a rock of calm where people could come and reflect. It became a great institution based on the type of seminars that most of you have taken, 
But there was one thing about the Aspen Institute that we really felt was important to change, which is to bring new, young, active leaders who could turn thought into action, uh, from, uh, first from the Henry Crown Fellowship, but then under Peter's direction as part of his Henry Crown Fellowship program to help spread the word around the world. And uh, I sort of like the metaphor, too, of catch and release. Uh, it's not really catch and keep, because we do catch ideas and then release them on the world, and that's why all of you are here, because of a catch and release policy, where uh, Peter started catching it and decided to spread it around the world. I am totally impressed by each and every one of you and what you do, especially the bravery. We're going to have a panel tonight on profiles and courage, but the courage comes in really just everyday ways as well applying thought into action, which is what the Global Leaders Network is about. I remember three or four years ago, Sarah can correct me if I'm wrong, when I was wandering into the New School's uh, leadership program that uh, Kim started and you're part of, and everybody was on a board scribbling, you know, what should we do, where should we go, should we do Delaware? And I did speak up and say, you know, after the storm, you have a chance to reinvent New Orleans, and that was more difficult than the other places that were on the whiteboard. But Sarah went down, started New Schools New Orleans. I think Matt was there. And it reinvented the school system of New Orleans. We have, uh, as John is nodding, John DC here has just taken over in Los Angeles. He's been part of this too. So that's one of, a, I guess, you know, a hundred stories you could tell of people gathering here and then saying, let's go make a dent in the world. You, in doing so, you've totally transformed the Aspen Institute. The Aspen Institute, as I said, was for executives in their mid to late careers who would come here to reflect. Uh, what you've done is changed the Aspen Institute and made a dent in it. So it's now a vibrant, global uh, institute that actually can turn thought into action. Secondly, you've changed the country. As I said, both in New Orleans and everything else you've invented. But most importantly, you've made a dent in the world. And I think that, uh, you know, for somebody, I came in with Peter maybe seven years ago to the Aspen Institute, and we talked about this, and I said, Ben, Peter, if you can do this, uh, I'll try to support you and get the Institute to support you in any way possible. After seven years, it's still the core mission right now our core strategic growth is to grow the Global Leaders Network. And every time I see a gathering like this, I'm reminded why. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Walter. Uh, we call this event Act Two for a reason. It's funny. Uh, Andy Cunningham, where are you? I know you're out here somewhere. Andy's right there, right smack in the middle. It, was, it, it fell on Andy to actually organize our very first convening that we called Act Two. And she was really part and parcel of our decision to, to use this name. It is, of course, a bit of a play on words. Uh, for fellows who have been through the fellowship program and are trying to figure out what's next, well, this is it. This is the second act. This is Act Two, a chance to come together and to continue our journey together, our life journey, as we try and figure out how we can make a dent in the universe. But we call it Act Two for another reason. We want to get together and look, first and foremost, we want to have fun over the next few days, and we hope you will. I have no doubt that you will. Uh, and we want to engage in deep dialogues. We want to continue our introspective journey, thinking about our lives and where we are in our life journeys, thinking about our legacy and what we can do in the world. But we want to act, too. And so part of the purpose of Act Two is to remind you that this is about having fun. It is about fellowship and everything that entails. It's about stepping back, pausing. It's about thinking, but it's also about acting. And so act two, please, act two. The theme of this act two is stepping up. Now, there's so many examples right here in the room, no matter what direction I, I look, of uh, people who have stepped up. Um, I also think of two people who aren't in the room tonight this afternoon, rather. One of them is Amobola Johnson. Amobola, you'll see in the program book, was to be one of our moderators, was supposed to be a panelist. Amobola lives in Nigeria. She was the uh, CEO of uh, Accenture, uh, then stepped down in that role, was the chairman of Accenture, but just got a call from the newly elected president of Nigeria uh, last week. 
asking her to become the Minister of Communication and Technology. So of course, in true spirit, she decided to step up. Uh, she's not with us here for a very good reason, in other words, because she's stepping up in Nigeria into a daunting role, um, but an important role. So in absentia, I'd like a round of applause for Omobala. There's another person who's not here with us today who is near and dear to so many of us, and that is Eric Motley. Um, many of you know Eric Motley. He and I work together. He's the managing director of the Henry Crown Fellowship Program. I mention Eric um, because Eric, too, has stepped up. He's got a full-time job with me working on the Henry Crown Fellowship Program. Um, but he decided to step up out of frustration with watching president after president come in here in the United States and then not getting their appointees approved. And he said, we must be able to do something to streamline this process. And he was able, with Walter's help, to pull together a bipartisan group of uh, um, heads of personnel from the Clinton administration, the Bush administration, and the Obama administration to start thinking about how do we streamline this process. And I should tell you that the bill that they put together was passed uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, and so Eric really stepped up to get that done. It's a great service to the country. Eric is not here uh, because unfortunately, those of you know him know that he was raised by his grandmother. She passed away uh, last week at the age of 92. Uh, Eric uh, spoke with her every morning of his life. Um, she raised him. Uh, it was really a great blow to him. I know many of you have reached out. I know many of you didn't know this yet, and I think it'd be great if you do reach out to him. But another round of applause for another man who's really stepped up. I could go on talking, but I won't do that because we have fellows right here who stepped up, and so I'd like to begin by inviting John D.C. up here. Good afternoon. My name is John D.C., and I am a fellow of the inaugural class of the Aspen New Schools Entrepreneurs in Education. Last year, I stepped up to become superintendent of schools in Los Angeles, California for the LAUSD school system. It's the nation's second largest school system, and I serve approximately 800,000 youth pre-K to adult. More than 83% of my youth live in circumstances of poverty, and more than 85% do not speak English. In 23 months, the majority of the school board and the mayor will be up for election. Currently, one out of two students do not graduate from high school. About 9% of ninth graders are proficient in algebra, and two-thirds of my youth cannot read at grade level in third grade. I have 11, 11, labor unions, and every one of the contracts expired on June 30th. In the next 100 days, I'll finish building my team and be about this work at full speed, building a performance culture, and implementing the work that we're doing, including a new evaluation system for personnel. We will also launch the LA Fund for Public Education, which is designed to jumpstart these reforms so that we can transform LAUSD to a system that is about honoring the rights of every single youth. And yes, it is true, California is broke as well. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Oredi Doetzi, and I'm a medical doctor as well as a member of the third class of the Africa Leadership Initiative West Africa Fellows. In September 2010, I stepped up to transform the first children's hospital in Nigeria to a regional referral hospital. Since the late 1990s, this 60-year-old facility, housed in a 100-year-old building, has seen both a huge increase in the demand for services with over 100,000 patient visits that year, and a significant decline in the quality of healthcare outcomes due to deteriorating infrastructure, lack of equipment, and critical shortages of key personnel. Over the past eight months, I've assembled a team, a public-private team, which has now made immediate long, short and long-term recommendations on achieving the transformation. Over the next two years, we expect to address financial sustainability, management and ownership structure, and teaching and research facilities in the hospital. We expect that we will have a new regional facility up in four years, just in time for Act 2 2015. Thank you. <laughs>
My name is Steve Benjamin. I'm a member of the second class of Liberty Fellows in South Carolina. I was also a participant in the inaugural AGLN Alumni Leadership Seminar in Stellenbosch, South Africa. On July 1st, 2010, I stepped up to become the first African-American mayor of Columbia, South Carolina, the great deep south city that hosted the secession convention that started our country's great devastating civil war in the 1860s. In our first year in office, we've increased public safety funding to record levels, begun an aggressive revitalization of our main street in downtown, and committed to a zero waste philosophy while still maintaining a $3 million budget surplus, a rarity in today's financial climate. In year two, we will unveil groundbreaking visions for multimodal transportation, public art, and regional cooperation, addressing everything from gang violence to job creation. Thank you. Greetings, everybody. My name's Michelle O'Day, and I'm uh, a fellow of the fifth class of the African Leadership Initiative in South Africa. In November 2010, I stepped up to make my leadership project my full-time vocation um, as director of the Justice Sector Strengthening Program in South Africa. Um, the South African Constitution is by far one of the most progressive ones in the world. However, in recent times, there's been a perception that it's under threat. Um, Essentially, our constitution has offered several promises to the people of South Africa uh, in the protection and promotion of fundamental human rights and a culture of adherence to the rule of law. My passion and goal is to ensure that these constitutional aspirations become a reality in our young democracy. The courts primarily exist to advance the constitution, and to do this, we must simply make the judiciary, the judiciary and the courts much more credible, reliable, and effective as public institutions. My team and I are supporting more robust court leadership and promoting a sort of management practice that will go a long way in restoring public confidence within these important public institutions. Right now, we are supporting 10 courts in four provinces to become high-performance courts, and by this time next year, hope to scale up to at least 18 courts that could potentially become models of good practice for South Africa and beyond. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Govindraj Aithiraj. I'm a financial journalist and an alumni of the 2006 inaugural class of the Aspen India Leadership Initiative. Last September, I stepped up to spend a year working with the Unique Identification Authority of India. It's a federal project headed by IT company Infosys co-founder Nandan Nelikani to issue over a billion, and please note that, a billion biometric identities to every Indian resident. This biometric identity will provide hundreds of millions of Indians a first-time ID, so you can understand the scale of the problem. And the target is to issue 600 million by 2014 and then onwards. It will also be a truly mobile online identity which will help citizens and residents to open bank accounts, efficiently access some $50 billion of subsidies, individual pensions, social security, and other benefits. It also permit the government uh, of India to trace the movement of funds and verify the delivery to the right people, thus reducing leakage and inefficiency, inefficiency in the system. And my own role is in the financial application part of linking UID. I'm also keen to continue to learn about technology uh, as I go back to my uh, role in media to solve uh, some, of most, uh, some of the most fundamental problems that have plagued India in the last uh, many decades. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leticia Teleguario. I am a Mayan woman from Guatemala and a member of the sixth class of Central American Leadership Initiative. I step up by acting as the voice of the indigenous population of my country, a population living in some of the poorest com communities in Guatemala. I am teaching Cachiquel, that is one of the uh, 24 Mayan language in my country, trying to find more opportunities for my people and teaching them to start business, trying to find markets from their products, especially with the handicrafts. 
and uh, trying to have influence with decision-making people in order to find space for the, for the political participation of the indigenous groups at the local and the national level. I'm very happy and very proud to be here because this is the first time the, that I visit this state, but especially because I am the first indigenous woman, not just in Cali and now in Aspen. And this is a big challenge, not just for Leti Telewario, but for you, because next year I will be here again, but with some of my brothers from Guatemala. <laughs> I think it's fair to say we look forward to that greatly. <laughs> so uh, we have plenty of time for lunch uh, till 1.30. I'm going to ask Abigail to come up here in a moment and give you a few uh, housekeeping things for us to keep in mind as we launch Act Two formally. But before we do, there's something we really couldn't resist. So Hildegard is uh, turning 19 today. <laughs> and so we decided, I think we all need to sing happy birthday to Hildegard Vasquez. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hildegard. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> yes, and we look forward to celebrating that at every act two, please. <laughs> Abigail. Hello, I'm Abigail Golden Vasquez. I'm, <laughs> I'm a VP at the Aspen Institute and I'm Peter's deputy on the Aspen Global Leadership Network. And I am just so happy to see so many familiar faces and I look forward to meeting so many of you that I haven't met already and hearing from you during this week about what we can do to help make the Aspen Global Leadership Network work for you even better. Um, I also have a couple um, housekeeping announcements. So, um, Pauline, thank you again for that wonderful reception. I want to share that Montclair, the store in town wh where the reception was held, um, has offered to donate 10% of all the proceeds this week through the 10th to scholarships for other fellows to come to the Aspen Global Leadership Network um, <laughs> programs. So to be able to um, take advantage of that, you just have to say that you're an Aspen Fellow and this will be going on through the 10th. So thank you again, Pauline. Um, I also just want to share, as many of you know, the altitude here can have some negative impacts. Please drink lots of water, um, take it easy on the alcohol, and um, enjoy, <laughs> just a little bit. Enjoy the oxygen uh, bar that we have um, back there. There's a big glow back there. You can sit down and inhale some oxygen, and um, I'm sure that will make you feel a lot better. Also, don't hesitate to let us know if you aren't feeling well, because we really can help if we catch it early. Um, we have uh, instituted a new program here at Act Two, which are the breakfast cohorts. And these are just gatherings that fellows can create themselves and, um, and then sign up to attend. Uh, that you, you know, things that aren't on the agenda gives you an opportunity to start your own discussion. Um, so there is a kiosk right out the door here and you can use the new Aspen Global Leadership Network Exchange to either start a new cohort or sign up for one. And there'll be every morning some white space on the agenda for you to participate in this. Um, also, most of the meals are going to be free seating and you can sit with whoever you want and I encourage you to meet new people and not always sit with your same class, but we do have a couple of assigned seating events and you'll find those in the back of your badge and we just ask you to really stick to your assigned table if you could because they, these are done for a reason. Um, also, all the meals will be starting about 15 minutes early, so we encourage you to come in here early and we can get started and get through these programs quickly so you can spend as much time as possible chatting and getting to know each other. Um, also you'll find uh, there's a schedule to, for the shuttles to get to and from town. You should have it in your packet. Um, if you don't for whatever reason, there are more by the reception desk. Uh, we'll also be tweeting during Act Two and we encourage you. Now I'm going to show how old I am. I think it's uh, you can use the hash Aspen Act Two 
hash mark <laughs> to, uh, to uh, connect while you're tweeting, and we'll be tweeting as well, and I guess we can all connect to our tweets. <laughs> Yeah, I just... <laughs> Finally, the next session are the mini text-based seminars. You should have readings. There'll be extra readings in the room. Um, just like in your own seminars, uh, these follow the code of confidentiality. So what's said in, said in the room stays in the room. And that's it. I hope you enjoy your lunch. I look forward to seeing you all through the west, rest of the week. Have a wonderful time.